talking about today? What the Lord has to say about the book of Ezra chapter 3. Before we get started into that, we'll go ahead and get started into prayer. Come Lord Jesus, we invite you into this video today to speak through me everything you want us to know. Give us spiritual eyes to see the things you want us to see, spiritual ears to hear the words that are spoken today, a spiritual heart to be open and able to receive all that you have for us, Father. Give us wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and discernment about what we're about to read, watch, and listen to as we put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet of readiness, shield of faith, sword of the spirit if there's anyone we need to be praying for speaking encouraging words to and or listening to just show us that person today father god we pray that you heal our bodies minds and spirits take away any and all distractions away from us so we can focus on you we pray that against any and all attacks of the enemy over this video this channel us our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for God's blessings over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for God's favor over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray that you give us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world, godly and divine wisdom, knowledge and discernment to make the right choices and decisions today, Father God, not only for the betterment of us, but others as well. And we thank you for that. We pray, Father God, that you guard and protect us and our vehicles, our loved ones and their vehicles, our leaders and their vehicles, and the animals as well. So we're traveling to and from different locations. Just drive for us today, Father God. Send down our guardian angels to protect us. We thank you for them. Give them and us the rest and restoration we both need to do the work you've called us to do. Just work in us, for us, and through us today, Father God. And protect us from others and others from us. Send down the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth today. We plead the blood of Jesus and pray Psalm 51 and 91 over us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for the safety of our cities and the people in them. We pray that you show mercy on us and heal our land. We come to you in repentance, Father God, and ask that you forgive us of each and every sin, whether it be in word, thought, and or deed, that we've committed against you, others, and or ourselves as we forgive those who've sinned against us. We pray for our enemies and all our loved ones and anyone listening today who has not yet accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and would like to do so now. We pray John 3, 16 over them. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So if you prayed that prayer with me today, you can know that you're going to go to heaven someday with the rest of the people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For it's not by works, so that no man shall boast. And there's not enough good works that any of us can do to earn our way to heaven. It's only through that perfect sinless life that was Jesus being born, died, buried, and rising again for our sins and the sins of the world that any of us get to go to heaven. So, Father God, we thank you for this person that accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Help them in their daily walk and relationship with you. Help them to get into prayer with you each and every day. That's just talking to you like we're doing now, listening for your voice and obeying what you tell us to do. And help them to get into your word each and every day, which is the Bible. And it stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. So they can discern between the truth and the lies, and the truth will set them free. Show them the gifts and talents that you've given them, and how to use them for your glory, to help those around them that are in need. It's a God divine appointment that you're here today. God brought you to the channel because he loves you so much that he sent his one and only begotten son to die for your sins. So Father God, I thank you for this person and everyone listening. I pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started into what the Lord has to say about the book of Ezra chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles and you'd like to follow along, go ahead and turn them to the book of Ezra chapter 3 and we'll get started. Thank you. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then stood up Yeshua, the son of Yazadak, and his brother the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Sheetelio, and his brethren, and builded the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. And they set the altar upon his basis, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. They offered burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord, even burnt offerings morning and evening. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom as the duty of every day required, and afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feast of the Lord that were consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a freewill offering unto the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer a burnt offerings unto the Lord, but the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. They gave money also unto the masons, and to the carpenters, and meat, and drink, and oil, unto them of Zidon, and to them of Tiri, to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the Sea of Yopa, according to the grant that they had of Cyrus, king of Persia. Now in the second year of their coming, unto the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, and Yeshua, the son of Yazadok, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all that they were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites from twenty years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Then stood Yeshua with his sons and his brethren, Kadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, together to set forward the workmen in the house of God, the sons of Hanadad, with their sons and their brethren and Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with symbols to praise the Lord, after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by course, in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout, when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers, who were ancient men, that had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. And that was the end of what the Lord has to say about the book of Ezra chapter 3. I hope you all enjoyed and were blessed by it today. What we're doing as the Lord hath commanded is to spread the gospel to the world. So we're going chapter by chapter all the way from the beginning of the Bible until the end of the Bible. So if you have not already, you can go ahead and get caught up on our previous videos. Just like our bodies need physical food to grow, sustain us, and give us energy, our spirits need spiritual food to grow, sustain us, and give energy, which is manna, which is the Word of God. When we get into that Word of God each and every day, um, we plant seeds of hope into our lives and the lives of others when we speak it over them. We speak life over them and life over us in our situations. Even though we might be going through the midst of tribul tribulations and hardships right now, we can be rest assured that the Lord is with us and will never leave or forsake us. And he's carrying us through the storms of life. So we are never alone. Once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he is with us fighting our battles. So we can rest assured he will never leave us. All right. And until next time, 
Bye.